Hello, my name is Wim and in this video I will show you how to use WebJars with a Timeleaf application. If your web application needs client-side libraries such as jQuery, Bootstrap or Alpine.js, then there are a few ways how you can add those to your project. You can just download the sources from the website and put those in version control together with your own project. You can use a CDN, a content delivery network, or you can use WebJars. Using a CDN is a very easy option. You just link to the library, which is hosted on the internet via the CDN, and you can start using it. However, this comes with several drawbacks. One, resilience. If your application fundamentally depends on a third-party service to work, then it's heavily dependent on that service being always up. Two, privacy. If web applications download libraries from a CDN, then that CDN can track those users. 3. Speed. It used to be that browsers shared downloaded libraries between different web applications, but this is no longer the case for security reasons. Moreover, the chance that different web applications use the exact same version of the exact same client-side library was already very low to begin with. For those reasons, it's better to either copy the sources into your project yourself, or take the easy way and use web jars. The WebJars project packages client-side libraries into the Java archive format, more commonly referred to as a JAR file. This allows JVM-based build tools such as Maven or Gradle to download those dependencies as part of the normal build. You can view all available WebJars on the website webjars.org. Just type what you look for in the search box. For example, let's type Alpine. This immediately shows us the list of the matching web jars. Next, we need to choose our build system. In our case, we will select Maven. Now we can just copy and paste the declaration into our pom.xml. By default, we get the latest version that is available on the web jars website. If we want an older version, we can select one from the combo box. If the version we want is not available as a web jar yet, then we can use the plus sign to have the WebJars website deploy that version as a web jar. Select the version you want in this combo box, press the deploy button, and it will be deployed to Maven Central. We can now open our pom.xml and paste in the Maven dependency declaration we copied from the WebJars website. After re-importing the project in IntelliJ, we can check that the dependency is present in the external library section of the project view. Here at the bottom we find org.webjars.npm, alpine.js and the version is 3.10.5. Just adding the dependency does not make it available in our HTML. We will need to add a link to it from our Timeleaf template. Let's open up our index.html template and then in the head section we will add a script tag. The script tag will be of the type uh, application slash javascript and we will point to the source of the web jar. Since we are using th source to indicate that should be handled by timeleaf and we will use the add annotation since we want to have a url all web jars are automatically served at slash web jars so we always have to start with that then next we have to use the artifact name which is alpine.js in our case then we need to specify the version and we can check again in the external libraries at the bottom. So it was 3.10.5 that we need. 3.10.5. And then finally, we need to look into how the web jar is structured exactly to know the rest of the part. Here we can look into resources. So we have Alpine.js 3.10.5 and then what we need is this uh, JavaScript file, cdn.min.js, which is inside the dist folder. So we need to repeat that in our part here, dist, 
slash cdn.min.js. Now we can add some Alpine code to see if that's actually working. Building further upon the previous video called Getting Started with Spring Boot and Timeleaf, we can add a bit of dynamic behavior. We will add a toggle behavior to show or hide the list of movies. First, we define our structure. It will be a div with inside of that two other divs. The first div will be doing the toggling and the second div will contain our list of movies. Alpine uses a directive called xdata and there we can define a bit of data. We'll define a variable called open and we'll initialize it with false. Next, the section we want to show or not show depending on the toggle state. There we can use the xshow and we can bind it to the open state. And finally, to change the open uh, variable, let's say, we need to add a click uh, listener. Then we can just say in the add click handler, open equals uh, the inverse of whatever open is currently. So it will toggle from true to false or from false to true. Now we can start the application and see if this actually all works fine. If we load up our application, we see the text click here to show the list of movies. And if we click on it, it shows the list of movies. If we click it again, it hides the list of movies. So our uh, Alpine JS is uh, working fine. If we open up DevTools and we refetch everything, then we can see that Alpine JS is indeed loaded here and it's loaded through the WebJars URL. One drawback here is that we have to specify the version of Alpine in the script tag, while we also already had specified the version in the pom.xml. Luckily, there is a way to avoid this when we use the WebJars locator dependency. We start by adding the WebJars locator jar file to the Maven pom. The current version is 0 0.46. And now we just need to update the link here and we can remove the version number and then we just restart the application now we go back to chrome refresh and the toggling still works fine web jars are a great way to add client-side dependencies to your spring boot with timeleaf project what are some of your favorite client-side dependencies please let me know in the comments below thank you for watching until next time bye